Hi, and welcome back to the quarry garden. And I've never actually filmed in this part of the quarry garden, but this is what we call our um, family garden, our back garden. I call it the white garden. And it all came about from a visit that I had to Sissinghurst. I think it was the year before lockdown, so it would have been about three years ago now. And I had this great visit and I just wandered around this world famous white garden that they have down there and it just blew me away and I just loved it. I loved the romance of it. It was billowing, overflowing. It, it, it was no formality. Well, there was formality to it with the hedges, but the plants just all sort of fell into each other and it was just full and I just loved it. And I came home um, and I looked at this back garden as it was, which was predominantly lawn at that point. And I just thought, I want to change it. I want to do something new with it. And that's how creating a white garden came about. Now, I've had a few problems with it. Um, this area here completely floods every winter. I think when we actually dug down to put the patio in, which I'll show you in a moment, um, we dug down quite low. Obviously the height of the garden, you can see at the steps at the back here, which I'll also show you, it's a lot higher and we've dug down so low, we're now just sitting on top of limestone. Um, and it's just the top of the quarry basically, with very little soil. And therefore every winter, particularly this side, floods an awful lot. So what I had originally, um, some of it I've had to take out. I lost two boxes balls, which were either side of this path and I had to take those out because they just simply died with the um, winter wet. They just couldn't, they couldn't survive. Um, also, I've had roses in here that didn't survive. I've had a lot of different kind of plants. I've now narrowed it down to certain um, varieties of plants that I know will survive here, but I'm still having to fine tune it after three years. It's been a long process. It took me two years to actually dig out the um, grass in either side of the borders too. So it hasn't been quick, it's took me a good three years to get to this point. And today I'm going to add some hydrangeas, which I know like the damp here, and also some hostas, which also like the damp. So I'll give you a little tour of what is the white garden. So going around to the back of the house is where we get to the white garden. And this is our family garden. This is obviously where we dine out, where we um, relax. I do grow a lot of seedlings around here too, because this spot gets a lot of sun. It's one of the few spots in the garden that does. But this is the white garden, and it consists of a circular lawn with four paths coming off it, some steps to the rest of the quarry garden at the top there, and four borders. It's surrounded by hedges all the way around. It's quite sunken down. We have lots of tall trees, all different kinds of trees, very large trees, beech trees, hawthorn, ash, some still yet to leaf out, sycamore, lots of ornamental trees, lots of different kinds of um, trees. It's predominantly a shade garden, as you can probably tell. I have grasses. Um, my favourite, or one of my favourite kind of plants to grow are umbellifers. I have uh, milk parsley, bolted parsley, all different kinds of umbellifers because they're one of the things I do like to grow. Um, but obviously the star of the show this time um, of year, late spring, turning into summer, are the Viburnum marisii, and that's obviously up that small path either side of the arbor and that's just stunning this time of year you can see now why i rave about these plants they're just beautiful i just love them the larger of the two has been in about eight years now i would say and the smaller one on the right that's only two years that's how much it's grown how quickly it's grown this area um, floods every year and that's why I have hundreds and hundreds of candelabra um, primulas which are very pretty. I love the whirls of flowers and um, the flower spikes are gorgeous but that's why I have so many. All of the paths are just full of seedlings and um, they just love obviously to be in damp soil. Regertias at the back, steps to the wider quarry garden 
and lots of different plants. I've got perennial sweet peas that grow by the side of this path. And then obviously moving around to this one, I have phlox, lilies, a purple allium, hmm, and bamboos. Now they are from the original, this used to be more of a tropical garden, which I did have for many years, um, but I had a few failures with different plants and I grew out of that style of gardening. And roses at the front with geraniums. Right, I think it's time to plant some plants. Okay, the first plant that I'm going to plant today, and it's it's gone really dark here. I don't know if you'll be able to tell on the camera, so I think we're in for more rain. Anyhow, it's a hydrangea, Annabelle, and I got two of them, one for this side and one for the other side of the path. I got these last year, end of season sale last year, so I got them reduced, so they're really good buys. Um, one strange thing, obviously this brand, this Proven Winners, is a very big brand in um, America, whereas over here in the UK, um, certainly here in the north, we don't get too many of them, uh, Proven Winners, but Hydrangeas is one that I've actually seen quite a few times. But over here it's marketed as a strong Annabelle. Um, that's what certainly it has on the um, label that I had with this pot. Whereas uh, I've noticed recently in the garden centres they've actually got strong Annabelle and then in brackets Invincible or Inst Invincible, one of the two, anyhow, something like that. And I think that's what it's branded as in, the, in America. Don't know why they've, they've chose to actually um, call it differently over here but um, that's what that one is anyhow. And it has the lovely big white football shaped um, flowers. So that should thrive here in this lovely moist soil. And around it, I'm going to add these um, hostas, Hosta Francie, which is a lovely hosta that has lovely white margins around all of the leaves. Hence why I've picked this one because it goes with the white theme in the garden. Um, and they grow about two foot height, two foot width from what I can remember, and they'll obviously enjoy it here. And I did originally plan to put several of them around um, this hydrangea, but because the primulas um, have been so successful, these candelabra primulas have been so successful this year, I won't be able to fit in the three that I originally planned to put here, possibly two if I'm lucky. But anyhow, I'll plant them here and on the other side, and I'll show you the end results. to get three hostas in both sides. Obviously for now the hydrangea is quite small. It should flower this year but it's a very young plant. It may take a year or two. And then on this side I did also manage to get three in and if they do become overcrowded I will split them next spring and move them down into another part of the garden. And again the hydrangea they look a little bit out of proportion because the hostas are in full full leaf and the hydrangea has a lot more growing to do but that should improve but look at the size of these rudgersia I think it's rudgersia look at those leaves and I love the contrast between those big huge leaves compared to the daylily in this particular daylily I think it's gentle shepherd loves wet soil really this sits in water it's actually got some flower spikes on already, so I'm looking forward to those flowering. 
Only thing to add is the hydrangea Annabelle is an arborescence hydrangea and it flowers on new wood. And the soil I, I had already added quite a lot of compost and farmyard manure to prior to planting the plants today. So that's those two very small borders, pretty much complete now. I just thought I'd end today's vlog in the glow of the viburnums. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you very soon. Bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.